and welcome back uh, to another session of has uh, series um, so i'll be just continuing on today with uh, same sessions uh, series which i started on uh, factors which affect drug action or drug response the last time we have seen something about uh, how factors like age body weight sex uh, race affects the drug responses but that's not the end right so we have some more factors which also do have an impact on how drugs act so today is the next of the sessions in which i'll try to discuss a few more points few more factors important of course factors which can affect drug response so the next in the line which affects the drug response is the genetic factor okay so we all know that uh, you know, genes after all control so many things in body now I'm not going into the details of microscopy of what happens and how genes control so many things but it's it's overall to be remembered that uh, you know something which relates to the genes okay so drug response relates to genes so what is implicable to me may not be the same with you okay i can get a very good drug response for a particular drug for a particular condition at the same time you who are viewing this channel if the same condition appears in you and the same drug is given it may not show uh, the required response everything other than the genetic factors remaining the same so then it boils down to something which relates to what we call it as the pharmacogenetics okay so there is a inter individual uh, differences in the drug response and that is attributed to the genetic makeup of the individual Okay, so now it's another vast field of pharmacogenetics. Now, what actually is that we want to achieve is something of individual medicine. Okay, tailor-made drugs. Okay, I always call it as tailor-made drugs. So, people ask me, uh, what's the future of medicine? I always say it's going to be tailor-made drugs, tailor-made treatment and management. So, what is uh, true for me may not be the same for you all. So, that's what we call as tailor-made drugs. So drug responses in which the response is uh, sure and predictable okay we see the genetic makeup then we deliver the drug in the required dose then we select the drug and so on so something relates to pharmacogenetics genomics or whatever it might be but again it's a vast chapter so not going into those details but clinically when it comes a few things which you might come across is um, examples i should say is uh, if you want to become an anesthetist or if you are interested in that field or you are pursuing that career then definitely you must have seen uh, you know succinyl choline apnea succinyl choline is a depolarizing muscle blocker so usually it is metabolized by a particular kind of enzyme uh, within minutes but anyway if there is a presence of uh, a typical pseudocholine stress then what happens is that the patient remains in apnea for a longer period of time and uh, you must have seen anesthesia has been trying to put the patient on artificial respiration try to give it till the time the effects just go down so it's very common to see this condition uh, particularly when i was doing my anesthesia residency sometime uh, earlier in my life I, I used to see so many cases of sexual cooling apnea the second in the list is uh, example is um, regarding halothane okay release uh, abnormal uh, that's what a malignant hyperthermia ma abnormal release of calcium that occurs after inhalation of halothane in a few individuals again relates to the genetic makeup of uh, the person okay so these are few examples which you can come across when you try to look for uh, genetic factors which affect the drug response okay so if that's about genetics in short of course i have not gone into details because if i go into details again that becomes itself a seminar like okay so i don't want to go into those details right now anyway in the coming sessions i might take up uh, that topic uh, again uh, so not for now the second in the list are the environmental factors okay so environment does have an impact on how drug uh, responses will come about uh, so again a few of those examples which come to your mind is uh, like you know uh, excess of smoking excess of alcohol uh, charcoal broiled meat it can cause induction of particular drugs so these are inducers natural inducers while grapefruit is a 
kind of citrus fruit, a big one. It's, it appears to be like orange, bigger than that, but it's an inhibitor of a particular cytochrome P450. So it can inhibit uh, the responses for a particular drug by inhibiting its metabolism and toxic effects might just come up. So these are few factors which can affect a drug response um, in the form of either induction or inhibition. Of course, interaction with food is another important factor. Some drugs will favor absorption um, when there is a presence of particular food particle in the stomach. Uh, so, drugs like Griseofilvin, uh, whereas drugs like tetracycline will uh, cause complexes with food and milk and so on, the absorption will be retarded. So, environmental factors do have an impact on absorption of drug and ultimately their responses because they affect the dynamics and the kinetics uh, of the drug in the body, right. So, uh, now the next would be, what is the next, so many factors. Uh, Okay, the next is route of administration of drugs. Okay, so you administer a drug in a particular way, uh, it has a particular action. If you change the route of administration of the drug, then the action also changes, the uses also changes, right? For example, magnesium uh, salts, uh, when you take it orally, they can be a very good antacids, but at the same time, if you want to use them uh, by parental route, they can cause CNS depression. So the use also changes. Okay. If you want to apply magnesium salts topically, then they can reduce edema of wound and so on. So these all things uh, do have a factor. Okay. So routes of administration also then ultimately decide on how the drugs will act, what kind of response uh, we can uh, you know, get if we change the route of administration and so on. So these are few things which come to my mind when we talk of route of administration and how it affects uh, the drug response. Uh, now the major concern for today which I feel is about the disease factor because you all know diseases do modify drug response. Okay, Drugs are for diseases, right? I, I do agree with that, that they are there to cure or limit a disease. But during a particular pathological uh, state, the drug response will vary. The drug response will vary. So we consider so many uh, diseases, but the important ones uh, would be something on, uh, for example, if the patient is suffering from uh, any kind of a heart disease, like a heart failure kind of a thing. Now remember, heart fa heart is one organ which helps to drive blood throughout the body, so uh, maintains perfusion. Okay. So if the heart is not functioning well, the fluid tends to accumulate within the body, so kind of edema. Uh, the intestines are not perfused well, so the absorption of the uh, food part of the drug itself might decrease over a period of time. Uh, so accumulation of drug will occur and toxic effects of the drug might be seen. Uh, heart disease itself, you know, heart is a failing heart, so it becomes more, sim uh, more uh, what I can say, sensitive to uh, sympathomimetic drugs, okay, drugs which are stimulant to the heart, so it's more sympathomimetic. So, it can induce arrhythmias for patients who are actually, you know, what kind of, who are already having congestive heart failure, so, or any kind of a pathology of the heart, so, drugs like adrenaline and so on will be, you know, kind of, the hypersensitivity kind of a thing in heart disease patients, so, it has an impact on how drugs will act on, in the body. The next would be something on, uh, if the patient has any kidney problems, right, kidney uh, problems, um, there are a lot of drugs which are nephrotoxic and kidney is one organ which is responsible uh, again for excretion of drugs. Now if you are new to my channel please go back and watch my episode on excretion of drugs which I have discussed uh, so many things regarding excretion of drugs by kidneys and how the processes take place and so on. So anyway, so kidneys are an important factor as far as excretion of drugs are concerned. Uh, but in general the overall health also is, uh, is dependent upon how kidneys will be functioning, right? So. Uh, first of all, uh, a few drugs are nephrotoxic, for example, diuretics, aminoglycoside antibiotics and so on, they can be nephrotoxic. So try to, uh, you know, try to minimize their doses, change the drug to preferred agent if you want to give these drugs in patients with um, kidney diseases or so on, so try to avoid them. Uh, certain drugs, you know, uh, can, uh, because, you know, if there is a kidney problem, then of course uh, the body is not functioning well. 
and uh, a few drugs can uh, be really a problematic thing because they can cross the blood brain barrier in that case very easily because uh, kidney problems also does have impact on uh, or they cause impairment of the blood brain barrier so again a few drugs which are seen as depressant can cause a lot of problems because if they cross they can be more toxic to the cns especially with uh, kidney issues and so on uh, so that's about kidneys and uh, drugs uh, again uh, kidney problems might alter the fluid volumes so volume of distribution of drugs will change uh, kidney problems may affect uh, the protein levels in the body excretion of certain proteins might occur and that can cause of more of free drugs accumulation of free drug of course kidneys uh, if a problematic thing that drugs won't get excreted out of the body so they just get accumulated and uh, can cause toxic effects even at therapeutic doses so monitoring at that level should be of importance as far as kidney problems are concerned so that that's one thing that comes to my mind when we talk of kidney diseases and uh, factors which affect uh, drug responses so it becomes an important factor right of how drugs will react in such a scenario the next in the line will be something on uh, liver diseases again liver is an important organ as far as drugs are concerned kinetics is concerned because it's concerned with metabolism activation from pro drug to drug uh, in excretion also okay, there are drugs which are excreted by liver also so this is an important area of concern so people with kidney pro liver problems sorry uh, will be uh, there will be an issue with drug responses right because uh, uh, you know uh, proteins are of course after all comes from the liver so any problems with the liver and protein levels go down so more free drug drugs won't get metabolized uh, to so uh, they're active things so they will accumulate inside the body certain drugs won't act itself because the conversion from pro drug to drug might be uh, inside the liver so if liver is a problem then the conversion may not take place so activation of drugs may not happen okay so in general it's a issue it's a issue again uh, kidney uh, again liver problems may in general affect the fluid volumes so volume of distribution of drugs will also change over a period of time uh, kidney problem uh, liver problems sorry why again and again kidney so liver problems at the end uh, can also be problematic because it can uh, certain drugs if given in liver disease can induce hepatic encephalopathy uh so that that's again an issue okay so these all things uh, have a variation okay you are not supposed to give drugs which are excreted by the liver in people again suffering from liver diseases uh again uh, should be aware that you know uh, drugs which can cause uh, bleeding tendencies okay so they can be more free in amount because less of protein binding so they can cause extensive bleeding issues in these patients and so on okay because clotting factors also do come from uh, the liver and so on so uh, uh, various angles of how we look into all these factors when we talk of uh, liver diseases and uh, drug responses uh, so better be careful on these uh, drugs which either have uh, something to do with the metabolism in the liver excretion from the liver Uh, protein binding and so on so better be careful when we administer certain drugs of this kind in liver diseases now of course it's a very big thing uh, which i cannot just go on describing uh, but again uh, be what i should say the summary is that uh, try to be careful when you administer drugs in patients with cirrhosis uh, hepatitis so on so i mean these are few examples of uh, pathologies of the liver the next in the line is of course uh, you know thyroid uh yes thyroid does have an impact on the basal metabolic rate so there are two kinds of states one is hypo that's the thyroid levels are low or there's a hyperthyroidism where the levels are very high so in both these conditions the drug may not um, in either of i mean if the, that's a state of hypothyroidism the drugs may not get metabolized uh, so can cause a problems in fact drugs which are depressant in actions like for example morphine cns depression so on don't try to give them in hypothyroid state because that can put the patient at real risk or in hyperthyroid states uh, you know stimulants okay for example drugs which are sympathomimetic action which can induce arrhythmias and so on because already there is tachycardia when we talk of hyperthyroidism so these drugs uh, then can cause lot of heart problems in these individuals tremors restlessness excitement in cns drugs and so on so stimulants for cns so don't try to give these drugs or if you want to give then 
weigh the risk and the benefits before trying anything uh, for these patients and start with the lowest dose possible control the pathological condition then try to administer these drugs and now remember when we talk of diseases now you need to be aware that there's something called as polypharmacy okay you are trying to give a lot of drugs uh, two three four or even more than those drugs of different kinds are given and when we give these drugs there's always kind of drug to drug interactions okay so one uh, drug might displace the other from the protein binding and if there's already less amount of protein in the body then entirely the other drug might just get free and can cause a lot of problems. So drug to drug interaction levels will also change uh, in a disease condition. So need to be careful on that, especially if we have kind of, uh, these kind of diseases that one needs to know. Uh, uh, so that was my quick take on uh, factors which affect the drug response. Now that's the second of the series. Now if you haven't watched my first one, go back and watch my first series where I try to discuss a few other points uh, and then maybe you find this session more useful. I hope you like this session. Thank you for watching. There's going to be one more series, uh, one more session uh, again for drugs. Uh, that's the end of it. So thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned to my channel. Do subscribe because your subscriptions do matter to me uh, as far as uh, the video making is concerned. Uh, thank you. Uh, love you.